Harvesting the sugarcane at the Sao Jose plantation involves backbreaking manual labor. Harvest time begins in September and goes right through to March. The tropical climate in northeast Brazil means that there are up to four harvest cycles a year. First, we burn off the leaves. The workers cut the sugar cane, top and bottom, where there's no sugar. Two, three weeks later, we return and burn the rest. The plantation covers 16,000 hectares, so workers have to use vehicles to monitor the sugar cane. 800,000 tons of biomass are produced here every year. The local sugar and ethanol plant buys it up. Sugarcane is big business in Brazil. 60% of the world's supply comes from here. The boom in sustainable biofuels has given a huge boost to business. The process of gaining the ethanol is relatively simple. A mechanical press crushes the plants to extract the liquid. Director José Barbosa shows us what's left over. This steaming mass is known as bagasa, traditionally considered a waste product. It gets burned in huge incinerators like this one. The process provides electricity and heating for the plant, but more than a third of the bagasa is converted directly into CO2. Bagasa is not actually that suitable for burning. It's very damp and first has to be left for days to dry out. But the plant uses it because it's there. We don't burn all the bagasa, only 85 to 90 percent. When we have surplus, we sell it. The firms that buy up the bagasa usually mix it with other sugarcane waste to create an organic fertilizer. But it's not very profitable for us, so it makes more sense to produce our own power instead. It's a predicament that experts at the Senai Kimatec Institute in Salvador de Bahia have been studying. Brazil produces some 150 million tons of bagasa every year, material that people here believe could be put to better use. Once dehydrated and ground, the sugarcane fiber reveals surprising properties. The scientists mix the bagasa with plastic granulate. They want to prove that bagasa is a valuable substance and change its reputation in Brazil and, if possible, beyond. Far from being a waste product, they say it could provide a key building block for composite plastics. The sugarcane fibers serve to reinforce the plastic. They also improve the mechanical properties of the polymer. A German firm called Technaro, which specializes in biocomposites, helped develop the formulas. The institute also received additional funding in the form of development assistance from the German government. Now, using standard industrial machinery, the scientists are creating entirely new products. Testing strips like this one demonstrate the material's durability and strength. The fiber compound plastic is up to 50% stronger than conventional types. This here is made of sugar cane, and this one too. This is the natural color. This one contains a pigment. So it looks completely different, and all you have to do is add color. Then it looks much better. Scientists in Bahia have long sought to use local raw materials such as sisal or coconut for manufacturing polymers, but Institute Director Leona Andrade says their focus has changed. 
particularmente a cana. Sugarcane in particular has one decisive advantage over other fibers. It's available throughout the entire country. So this new technique could be applied anywhere, unlike with sisal, which is available only in this area. The state of Bahia accounts for only a small part of Brazil's sugarcane production. The bulk of the industry is located further south, around Sao Paulo. The new German-Brazilian initiative could give a double boost to the region by promoting it as a center for green innovation as well as promoting its sugarcane industry. But news of this valuable new resource has yet to filter down to the man on the street. This vendor is selling freshly squeezed sugarcane juice. But he sees no value in the bagasse. Bagasse is just waste. I put it in a bag and leave it out on the street for the garbage collectors. Back at the sugar factory in Pinheiro, managers say they plan to continue burning their bagasse, even though it's harmful to the environment. But they are at least building a more efficient incinerator. For our firm, using it to generate power is the most profitable option right now. This energy project is expensive and designed for at least the next 20 years. But perhaps if there's a change in the overall planning or in the processing method for bagasse, then maybe we'll reconsider our policy. Brazil's sugarcane industry is a runaway success. But the process of transferring production to more environmentally friendly methods looks set to move forward a little more slowly.